starting here. We're going over the promised FreeCAD workbench on the 3D printer. So D3D workbench within FreeCAD to help people design different variations of the 3D printer based on a library of parts. So we've got a so what we have to start with is the library of parts that we already have, which we've developed and we've been using, which are which is primarily the universal axis as well as other components. So so on the the page to go to on a wiki is just plain D3D and in it the the latest we have for the actual all the modules separated out and the final CAD exists in um, I think it's in the number 10 modules so we've gone so on a D3D page there's modules there's D3D integration there's extruder like all this, all the other modules, but integration is where we um, let's open that up. That has a clickable image with all the different modules that we have so far. Um, where's my cursor here? Where's it going? My crash in here. What's going on? Yeah, um, there's a page D3D integration. And you can see my screen. Steven, can you see my screen there? Can you hear me still? Can you hear me or the bad connection here? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you got some bad connection there? Can you hear me well now? Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so on the the document itself here, the the modules that we have, like the frame, the like all the different pieces. That, I mean, particularly the axis is on the D3D integration page. And what we did was we made different versions of the axis. One is the full detailed version with all the minute detail, like the like the belt hole with the belt details, etc. And some that had bolts, some that didn't, and some that were huge files, and others that were very small. So, because when you start making the final file with everything in it, it becomes very large. So that's why we did file simplification. And on a page like the D3D integration, we have the things like, for example, D3D left Y axis, then D3D left Y axis simple. So for the workbench, what we probably want to do is use the, the simple versions initially and perhaps as a feature at the very end, once we have the entire thing designed, then we can do something where we actually reify it, like click, like make, make perfect. And it would, would actually put the more detailed versions just if we want to do like nice screenshots or whatever. But for the initial, yeah, like when uh, we're, sorry. yep. I can't see, I can't see your screen. You can't. Um, okay. I can see like your. Icon thing. Okay. Know, the mobile app doesn't have that many here, but... All right. No, it might be bad bandwidth. But anyway, I'm recording this so you can review this when we get off the phone here. But okay. on the um, D3D integration page, we've got all the files. And we do know that while we're, if you have all the gory detail in each file, it would get too heavy. So we want to do simplified files. But the question is, how does this basic, how would this basic workbench work? So what you'd want to do is then, uh, I mean, you've seen how the build goes and you see that we have the frame and then into the frame we put in all the different axes. Uh, is filled with axes and the standard con configuration um, is the X yy uh, which means one x and two y axes and we're gonna go to zz like a lot of people had trouble keeping that like the bed tends to after some time to tilt so it's gonna be more robust if we go to two z axes as well so let's make it the standard pretty much x y y z z which can be supported by ramps of the little controller uh, but basically the key issue when you design a so if you size the frame to be whatever size frame you want um, so you size the frame to whatever size you need and then you fill in the axes and the axes have a, have to be of the particular this particular length Yeah, yeah. So what we'd want to do is probably have a thing where, okay, you put in um, the axis and you, you give it some parameters, like, for example, make it this long. So that means you'd extend the rods and extend the belt and everything else. Well, it's essentially just the rods and the belt that would extend. Everything else remains the same. So, so we'd want to do that. Um, so let's go through the, yeah, so, so the axis, I mean, the axis is pretty much identical in all cases. The only variations you can have is which side the belt. Yeah, there, there are details of why, like how the axis have to be exact. So the variables in it are, okay, belt length rod length and then the orientation of the carriage like is it is that the, the place where you hold you remember the belt catcher yeah. the belt catcher has to be either up or down uh, for it to work with the existing software belt catcher has to be has to be in the correct orientation 
and then also the motor has to be on the right side like it could be on the front like on the if you're looking at the the axis it could be like on the right or left hand side so motor orientation has to be correct that's pretty much it we are currently wanting to redo the end stops to a simpler system like we had the magnetic attached end stops that works for very small machines um i mean those end stops work for for larger machines but for very small machines it's useful to save that extra inch of space that the end stop takes and build the end stops right into the carriages uh build okay. the end stops into the carriage and this is something like um i think in the official version we can say we're getting rid of the end stop and just attaching the the end the because the end stop we're using is on a little board what we can do is just use the end stop itself without that whole board so it's actually simpler in terms of uh sourcing parts you get just that little micro switch part you don't need anything else all the other stuff is just a little light uh so we actually wouldn't have that the indicator light that shows the end stop is on but i mean you'll see that the end stop is working uh when it triggers the disadvantage of not having that little circuit board is that you don't see the light of the end stop triggering uh is it by the end stop is that the, like the homing switches that you're talking about yep yeah, when okay. when it homes, when it hits, there's a little light that lights up. Uh, we wouldn't have this in this when we shrink up, when we simplify the end stop. I mean, we can also include the traditional end stop module, which is kind of neat because you can just attach it or detach it readily. Uh, we can keep both of them, but I can just say that for the very small frames, like if a person is actually ending up getting a 16-inch frame, and then the cutouts in that, we're looking at 14, 12, and 10. So you can literally use those inner frames. If you use the inner frame, you can do a mini, your D3D mini, which has like a 5x5 five five inch bed, which is still workable. But the only way you can do that is if you eliminate the end stop and make it, uh, make it save that extra inch there. Because at that point, every inch of space matters because it's a tiny frame. So that's why... Uh, does that make sense that for the small machines you want to get rid of the end stops the large end stops and make it make the little end stop frame integrated uh, the sorry axis integrated integrated yeah, with the axis uh, so it would still know it makes sense for like saving space uh, yeah i don't i'm not sure if it makes sense as far as like how it would home itself does yeah it, does not need, it, does, it doesn't need them no no we have them we have them we just have a different um yeah let me sh show you like end stops um yeah like this thing okay so yeah end stops so th all this stuff is documented it's this end stop that's in this 3d printed piece but we can just take the micro switch out and just use the micro switch so for we can say for large machines we can use the end stop end stop is okay um, so this whole end stop assembly with a 3d printed piece and you can you can once you review this uh, this this document uh, are you actually able to actually access the document and click links in it because uh, I actually don't see you in a document so you're doesn't look like you're in there uh, did you share it with me yet okay uh, I don't Okay, if you can't access the chat, I'm going to email that to you. Working doc. Uh, we're diving into the details here. The, but it's critical because the end stop is critical to the, to the universal axis. It's part of it, so we kind of have to go through this. For smaller machine, the simple micro switch without all the electronics around it is fine. It still has your end stop functionality, but it just doesn't have the indicator light. Uh, and when we talk about the micro switch, it's this one. 
Let me see my line. Let me get you a link for that. Okay, I see the, I see the doc. Okay. Uh, do you want me to look at the install link? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but the main thing is when you download the access, you sh you should so so the way it should work. So. Um, okay. Okay. I see that. Yeah, have the dog. Okay. The end, end stop speed. Yeah. Um, I still don't see you in the document though. I, you're not appearing because typically it shows that somebody else is in it. Uh, it's got like some viewer for the. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So interface. So the way the interface in FreeCAD is going to look, there's going to be just buttons which give you the different parts. So, so for example, you click on a click on a button for the axis, and it lets you define an axis. So basically, just like all the other workbenches, you just drag and drop, click on icons. You would say click on that icon, and it would uh, insert into the document your axis let's say and we probably want to yeah so so click an icon and it gets you the part automatically so it puts it into the the working window okay and this is by parts is it each individual part or is it just like the whole yeah, like so. So, what are those parts? The one would be the unit. So, are you looking at the second page? Yeah, look at the second page. So, I'm saying that's the interface definition. We'd have. Man, you're the guy to do it. You're the interface guy. <laughs> right? So, user interface. It's exactly what we're doing. This is right up your alley. So, this will, this will be really good. Um, I like it. Uh, so what, just basically the two basic things are universal axis, there's the frame. Uh, basically you'd, you'd click a click a button for each one of those things. So universal axis, you want to get um, frame, you want to get the heat bed. What else we got in there? There's the wire, the cable chain is at the end. I don't know how we're going to do the cable chain, but let's let's talk about the simple ones first. Let's cover those. So, say you click on the the universal axis. Uh, you're seeing page number two. I see. Yeah, it's just you just have a, like a diagram. There. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. So the the thing is, when you click on the universal axis, the the icon, when you click on the icon, what happens is the part appears, and then you can set parameters for that part. So parameters. So let's talk about the universal axis. What are the parameters for the the universal axis that we're gonna want to change? So parameters, because typically what happens is uh, in a in a when you click on a part in FreeCAD, it gets you properties, and it, in there it shows you parameters. So the parameters that you want to change, so it would display, get you a a dialog, not dialog, but the the properties box, and the pr parameters that you select are uh, there's going to be length of length of uh, axis meaning length of rods and then that will fit in the belt automatically that will adjust basically the whole axis to be appropriate like you know if it's 12 inches it will have show 12 inches with the belt and everything um, yeah okay. yeah and um, so that means you're gonna have to have a file which you just call on to and and then you can change the parameters of that file. So this, yeah. 
Um, now the, the critical parts are like what you know how do you what do you go from there so say you put in the axis and you say well you probably probably the step number one is you click the frame so you start with a frame and then you start attaching the axis to it okay um, so that's for universal axis it's the basically really what you what you have only is the length of it I mean everything else um, length but also like where which side you put the motor on so probably you would have toggles for like motor on the right hand side left hand side yeah um so motor look motor like left or right and then maybe like the uh belt catcher up or down that makes sense yeah yeah and then of course your your code your little script in python will will change those parameters accordingly and so forth. Uh, so uh, one thing I didn't understand when I was doing the test was how you make like some kind of like how you insert like this whole body and that has like all of these things like the belt and stuff that would be adjustable. Uh, is that just like I make a part that is or some kind of assembly that is like I did for depth test that is the, the axis put together. And yeah. Somehow that that is loaded into this. Yeah. This other thing. That's right. So so the axis, as you see me drawing there, it's like say this would be the motor piece. So you you draw these things up. I mean, you have the file. So say that's the you know that's the motor piece there with the motor and uh, you know the rods would be in there but you got you know you're gonna have the files of the of all these parts but then for example like so it's made of the left piece the the carriage piece and um, idler piece and then for the length, like you, you basically make these rods parametric, so you stretch them out, like you know, here say they're 10 inches. Then in another configuration, you make them 20, but then you automatically adjust the position of this piece to be all the way out there. So you move the XYZ position of that piece there, right? So I mean, that would make sense, right? You have the file for this entire thing, but you would just, they'd be parametric in terms of all these pieces are individual objects and you just move their position accordingly after you have switch changed the length of the rod and then for the belt you might say okay well the belt now instead of being so long it's it's longer and we could do like a you know the belt could be represented just like a, as a black plain thing without the bumps on it so that it takes less memory so you know the belt structure you just make it show up as just longer now it'd be nice to show the detail like for the purpose of um, doing instructionals we should put enough detail into these uh, drawings so you we can do like the whole exploded part animations so the question is how much detail goes into the into all of these and we've been through that actually before quite a bit in some of our older meetings like I'm gonna go to the development log where we talked about the axis simplification so let me just pull that some of that up let's see because we went through exactly like what are the details that need to be shown versus not on the axis itself um, and we've generated the simplified and more complex files. Let, let's find that meaning so we, we're well oriented. Um, yeah, let's let's wait for this, these documents to load up. Um, but we went through what are the specifics that we need to include. And right now we just want to reiterate that and just settle on exactly the level of detail that the axis is going to have so that it's sufficient for all purposes of design. Uh, so let's start a new slide. 
So required features of access. Let's talk about what that would be. Um, it's like 12 or so features. So, uh, and before we draw up diagrams of this, that's why I wanted to pull up one of these old meetings where we actually talked about file simplification. Let's see. Mm, was it brick press it was before brick press. What about um, things like the the length of the the chain that holds the wiring and then yep. the, yeah definitely that would be a thing that that would change but that would be like one of the next modules um we didn't get there yet uh hold on i'm just trying to find this other document june june 20 let's see june 20 nope June 13 no not much there Let's see May 30 yeah I mean what you just said is that's exactly right so that would be another if we go back to page 2 there's heat bed there's cable chain I think you know we can you know we can go into the details of those later but yes they are definite details there's the spool holder I mean the machine if you don't have a spool holder the wire will always get the the filament will always get tangled but tangled up so you definitely need to add a spool holder um, oh there see so you appeared in there is that you or is that someone else yeah that's me I, I got the I open and I download the slide deck oh, okay yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's yeah there's more there's cable chain there's the controller. Uh, so the, yeah there's a few pieces. I mean the end stops we actually included as a as a separate unit. So there's end stop. And of course for the universal axis like when we do the do the axes. It would actually be convenient if we differentiated X, Y, and Z. So, so, so you can click on X axis, Y axis, Z axis, or you can do that as a, as just select the axis and then you you arrange it later. But it's probably easier to have like three buttons, X, Y, and Z buttons right there, so you don't have to mess. It'll be probably easier, while still not overwhelming the interface. So, so we can say. You think it's going to be easier to have a button for each axis or no? Uh, I, don't, I was just thinking, I was just thinking like, if, even if you have like one button that automatically orients it there in the, in the correct plane, you still have to say like which side of the machine it's going to. Yeah, you would. So, so I'll have to I'll have to mess with it and see if it's like right. better than just. Yeah. If there's like a easier way to do it, maybe. Right. But I think it definitely would be better if like, they didn't have to mess with that stuff. Yeah, I mean, the less messing around, the better. Like, literally, that you can design, have a full, and not a bullshit design, but a real design, one that actually has all the geometries worked out in like in like an hour, where you can see uh, everything about it. Now, the very last test, like I don't know if you can do this. This will be like an advanced feature, 
but the advanced feature would be after you design the explicit geometry, it would actually show you an XYZ cube that shows what the range, like the, the build volume. So you don't have to like move the things around. It'll actually show you because it knows that each of these pieces can move back and forth so much, right? Uh, so the final, because the final thing you want to know is at the end of the day, well, how big is your build bed going to be? If you say you're making a large printer or whatever printer, how much, how much space exactly you have so you can design a proper, proper size of a build bed and then you size everything accordingly. So, so the feedback, like the, the main thing that you want to get out of this design is how big is your build volume? Because uh, sometimes you can design a, a 3D printer and you find out it's got like, oh, this only thing only gets me like three by three inches because, you know, like in one of the smaller frames, especially if people are doing small frames. And then they find out that with everything included, you can't really get much build volume. The other thing that's in, that we also need, so there's the, I didn't mention the extruder, but the <laughs> extruder is a big one. Extruder with the with its height probe so there's frame three axes extruder heat bed cable chain spool holder controller and end stop that's kind of what i have like th those so that's two four six eight ten buttons and um that would be cool like that if that workbench has about that many 10 to 12 or something then that's pretty good so on the axis itself here let me see if this is uh, if I can find what about uh, do you want to have it like I know the build volume uh, should there be like a button for generate build volume yeah or, yeah definitely uh, what about like uh, generating the build material like oh man <laughs> yeah yeah Down the road. yeah yeah no I mean we, we definitely want that but the question is you know that may be the, like a later phase. So okay. so then it will be like, yeah, like you said, generate build volume. That would be an excellent thing. That would be, yeah, that's extremely useful. So you actually got a, you know, real design. Generate build volume. Down the road, like with the bill of materials, one of the tasks, maybe actually you can look at it, maybe like the, if, you, if you get this thing done, um, look at the actual aspect of exactly that the the bill of materials how do you do a, a bill of materials now be i know that freecad right now has the ability to to do a if you arrange the things properly in a in a part design tree in the tree view then you can generate a nice bill of materials right there and like uh, cool stuff there the thing that would help us the most is if within freecad we actually put in the links to the actual parts so that when it generates the bill of materials, it replaces the current thing that we do on Google Docs. It will get you a hyperlinked bill of materials that's formatted. That would be super cool because right now, we basically have to do that work twice. We do the design, and then in a complete different document, we just do all the parts and their sourcing, and that takes a lot of time. So if we could build in that functionality into FreeCAD that we that we simply put in the actual hyperlinks as a text property in FreeCAD, and then we just spit out the entire bill of materials, that would totally revolutionize our workflow because right now we're doing it manually. So this would be very important, like for down the road. I mean, I want to get that functionality as soon as possible because I mean. That could make our development just so much more efficient using people's time. So, definitely. I guess at some point, uh, you could, even for the, the printed parts, you could estimate the amount of print time, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, generate build. Yeah, like the extras, I'll put them in, in like, uh, in purple. Yeah, yep. Estimate part. Oh man, that would be so useful. I'm okay. I know there's some. Uh, yeah. I, I use Octoprint. I know they have some plugins that do that. That's something they can estimate. Time. Yeah. Estimate the time and the the uh the amount of price I can look at. So the code for those would be. 
yeah yeah and for one thing for one like it, it could just because these are standard parts in the library we already know how much print time they require so we can actually just take that data and just calculate that automatically here so estimate print time there would be um, what else did you say Yeah, uh, printer cost. The overall cost of everything is probably more. Total cost. Yeah, so for example, if we were able to input... Uh, total cost of the parts, because then we have to get it from the website. Total cost of parts. Right, so you put in, as part of the information for the the parts, you put in the links to their their costs and everything. Like unit cost. So, So that would be really cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, those are extras. And in fact, down the road, I mean, we can say, <laughs> we could even add, like, order parts, and they could order it from us or from whoever. So we can start playing those games like that. Because definitely, I mean, one of the things here is I want to set up, I still haven't really set up the print cluster where it would be just turnkey printing with, like, a web interface to do that for the print, print cluster which would require simply a, a web interface where you're actually ordering parts online I'd like to do that we haven't done that that's one of the things to create and I think that's to make that open source is really powerful as well uh, yeah, so that uh, I don't know if this is not my list but what the goals are but like there's 3D hub where you've got the listed as a uh, print site on there and you can just link to the 3D hub and order it there yeah that could be that could be one way the the thing that I was thinking for how we want to do the prints is that a lot of times you have to experiment with prints so what we wanted to have is more a shopping list you're not just printing your parts but you're selecting from a list of proven parts so that in that case we're limiting ourselves to what we're doing but we know we can print those parts out really well and we don't have to do any experimentation this is more like just for the customer support because it because for any new part that we haven't printed there will be a lot of questions like person might upload a part and it's like really crappy to print or we don't get good results we want to work with files that we understand well so I was gonna limit it not to just print anything but print from our library of proven prints that's kinda how I was thinking about it. like for example these parts we would know exactly how to print them and we'd have printers already set up to do that including like the robotic harvesting just a simple system where you're knocking these parts off the print bed and actually putting them in a box so basically like a little automated print cluster so but that's that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're talking right now but that's just something that is very interesting because i mean it's it's just going to happen more in the future that more people are producers that's that's inevitable so yeah, we definitely want to play a role in that. But let's talk about the required features of the Axis. And um, let me see if I can go back. I don't know, I can't find that. I'll, I'll pull up that one meeting where we had... Uh, oh, I, th I actually think it's called File Simplification. Let's see, on the wiki. File Simplification. Because we were talking a lot about File Simplification. Because at a certain point, yeah, it's there. Uh, file Simplification. So let's point you to... Oh yeah, okay. Yep. So I'm going to link this document. See this file simplification document? So see file simplification. Uh, and we'll basically refactor that right now. Okay, so the link is there, but in a document, we already have it labeled, like what are the critical parts that we need, and what we ended up doing was to generate, yeah, like for example, are, are you able to see my screen now or still not? Uh, let me switch back. No, sorry. Okay, okay. I was at first, but... Right. Yeah, so that document has the all the critical links to the more complex and the simplified files. 
like we we had a whole bunch of sessions where we took the existing files and for the purpose of modeling we just reduced their complexity so for example this part spreadsheet that i'm showing right here shows all the files there's the cad file link and then at the end there's the simplification in this other column so we can click on those and see but actually what we did was um you know take the motor printed piece okay 3d uh, like say the axis pieces what we did was we uploaded the original file and over that we uploaded the tiny version so if you're not seeing my screen you'll see the recording but what happened for example is you take a file the universal axis motor side we uploaded the first version it went up to 200 kilobytes for the, that individual part and then with the grand simplification it went down to like nine kilobytes so we we basically created a super simple version of that file that still included the necessary detail now uh, what are those details just to go over that a little bit right now so in that document it shows uh, several parts and I'm listing actually 12 of them as the critical aspects um, right so we already have those simplified files so like for example when I download say the so I'm just clicking to download for example the universal axis motor piece and I'm opening it up and let's see how that looks okay somehow okay my freak out is is uh, crashing no it's not it's it's going um okay so this is the, the part that you already have the yeah we've got all the cad files file. yeah this is the part that I would just import. Yeah, yeah. And, okay. Yep. Yeah. So you'd take that part and, you know, say the, the axis, axis motor piece, uh, like I'm showing on this. Yeah, that's a super simplified. Yeah. We don't want to use, like, the oversimplified version. We want to do, like, an intermediate version because some of those files, as you'll see, are, like, so simple. They, hard, they just look like a box almost. So... So we don't want to do it too simple. We want to have some detail in there. But let's let's right now label the things that are that are important that you definitely want to have because they matter for the geometry. So so definitely you've got the motor. Uh, so if you're looking at the document page three, there's going to be a motor, and there's going to be a plug on that motor. That the orientation of that plug is important like wherever that plug is plug orientation also matters because it can be going for example into the frame and so depending on so actually maybe we, we want to select plug orientation uh, that might be one of the things we want to select because it could be on either of the four sides of the motor yeah um, that's exactly right yeah yeah like and we should probably um so like, technically to put it together it didn't matter when you made it but to take it apart it probably would matter no it does matter it yeah yeah bolt orientation i mean that's that's a detail that will matter uh there's the nut catchers on the end of the do you remember the nut catchers where the other axis plugged plugged into the through the connected through the nut catchers. Uh, is that the, you're not talking about the thing for the uh, the belt, right? You're, no. You're talking about this is the this is just on the other side of the bolt, right? Yeah, that's right. Where we okay. bolted things together through up through the nut that was caught inside the 3D printed piece. Yeah, I remember they they both seem the same. Both sides seem the same. Like you could fit a nut or bolt. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And and in fact, that might be interesting to do in some cases because you could either we just use nuts so far, but yeah, you can put the head of the bolt in there for possibly some other applications. Yeah, 
So it's but external. That's what I was wondering if, if, uh, if, it was, if we need to show it here because like, it seemed like if you put the bolt in the... Because you could do it either direction and there was nothing to stop you from doing it. It seemed like if you put it in one direction, it would be really, really hard to get to to take off later. Right. Like you'd have to take apart a lot of stuff just to get to it. Right. Um, therefore, the thing to really pay attention to, like once we have this entire um, entire construction set within FreeCAD, what would be really cool is to do like the full documentation, like the language agnostic instructionals, part explosions. So we would want to have all those details that are necessary in this in these files without making them too heavy because we don't want to put all the details in. So what we probably want to do, the strategy would be um, keep all the features except. So let's list some of the simplifications. And we kind of talked about this a bit, but we never really finalized the exact state, and we should really settle on that, what we have right now. So for example, the belt... Um, I would say make it without its bumps. Don't make the detailed belt. Make it without its bumps. It will be just a straight line. Uh, as far as the belt catcher on the carriage belt catcher where the belt actually is caught. Um, that also takes up a lot of memory so don't show without bumps. Just show a flat thing. Um, but what would be nice at the end, actually, so so it's important that you design and you can move things around quickly, but at the end, maybe if we go back to slide two, we should probably have a button that says generate detailed, detailed uh, version, which means that once we, we create this heavy file, which would be good for just, a, you know, just like viewing and stuff, but not doing much with it. Yeah, yep, yeah. like render quality, yeah, render quality image. So generate detailed version. Um, and it's, I mean, I would actually put it secondary, like, yeah, we'll, we'll do that later. Uh, but say we want to do a, a detailed instructional we should have like this yeah to generate the detailed version yeah we should have that capacity within this workbench so that this workbench is comprehensive for meeting all our documentation needs as opposed to having to go to all these separate files so somewhere we should have like a like a library yeah like in this workbench we should have all the files in there so uh just somewhere in a directory structure just have all our detail files which means that this would serve the purpose of organizing all our files to the final version so uh, I would say that once we have the the basic version of our D3D workbench then we should work on the final versions within this workbench as opposed to now again going into just other documents we want to kind of like centralize the D3D design effort around this workbench so do a good minimum viable product that is robust enough that everyone can use it and probably such that i mean naturally you'd want to be able to leave it such that if you design the whole thing it's still a freecad object and still you can erase and modify things just using normal freecad functionality so say you really want to modify something what we should have here is like the basic kernel the, all the basic features and if people want to go nuts on making variations, they still can, um, because FreeCAD allows that naturally. So that's that's kind of how we should treat it. We should have like a basic, really good model with at the end just getting to a final uh, render quality thing, and in the meantime, just identifying all the details that are important. So not so. Let's go go back to this on this on this motor mount piece. There's also has to be an end stop. Uh, holder or end stop mechanism built into that because 
that's typically where we put the end stop on the motor piece since that's it's much more convenient for wiring so somewhere on this motor piece the end stop has to be put on and the simplest way to do the end stop is just to glue it with crazy glue that would actually work work reasonably well um, it's one way to do it if we don't want to 3d print or modify the carriage itself the no modify the the, the motor piece uh, we can as simple as glue it in the initial implementation and then as we get more comfortable with that once we prototype it we'll see if we want to put like a little indent where we do some other thing I mean, we could put just that little. I mean, what I what I kind of like. I have the the peeve on is the just putting it the end stop, the little micro switch on the magnet, so that you can take it on and off. It's not permanently attached. Those magnets are quite strong, so that, so the end stop piece would would certainly stay on, no problem. But maybe just put it on a magnet and put in one of the magnet holes, and then it doesn't take up that extra inch of space. So so I mean, just to show that somewhere there will be like a little end stop holder uh like in the corner somewhere like maybe you know wherever like wherever we put the end stop um so end stop would be there now um yeah i think you should go with i think probably put in the I don't know, I kind of like the existing end stop. It works well. It just takes up too much space. But I think it could be a decent version for... Um, I don't know, for... I think... I think we can keep that as one option. And then... Well, at least for now. We might want to go to version... You know, the next version of this... Uh, workbench where you just take that out altogether if we find a really good way to do the end stop in a simpler way we'll have to test how this one works is it how you know how important is it that you have that you know that little light that indicator light i don't know maybe some people really like it or something they're gonna say hey i always want to do that end stop with a light because i like a little red light I, i'm not sure i didn't i don't think i got it wired up to the point where it's like Yeah. I mean, I have a CNC router, uh, and it has some Hawking switches on there, and it doesn't have any light stops. So yeah. It doesn't really, I would say, like, it doesn't matter to me that it has light No, I, I would agree with that. It's it's it just an extra that's, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, as long as the machine stops, you know it works. The light is just, just kind of, uh, I think, just cute, but I don't know, it doesn't really do much for you on, on other than knowing that the thing actually has power so it, that in that sense it is useful uh, but you know if you have power if the end stop works or not so I mean um, it wouldn't be immediately visible until you you have it working um, so in that sense it's it's good for troubleshooting early on but once it's working it you know it doesn't do anything you don't look at that light yeah um, Let me just take a look at here. Yep. Um, okay. So continuing, so yeah, I mean the simplified end stop, I like it. The thing that we missed here, like, I mean that, I don't know how we're going to do that at the end, but the wiring, I mean, I don't know, you might, you probably might figure it out, I don't know, it depends how good you are at this, but uh, the wiring is something we've never really shown in the full detail, because it's just hard to draw it up in FreeCAD, but, I mean, it's doable, um, but I don't know if we're going to end up showing it's the wiring is kind of like I mean it would be good to show it eventually and maybe we can figure that out um, I mean it I mean if we want to be really professional we should have it but I think that's like a really a later phase because it doesn't stop us from building the thing um, I was I was I think not necessarily for me like it wouldn't have to necessarily be 
in the drawing of it, but like probably would be better as if like diagrams. You know, the, di the diagram was there. Like yeah. if I click on it and it, like it could be like in like a corner, like a zoomed in view of it, it's, like what the board actually looks like and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, then I guess you need to know where it goes to. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're actually generating some WebGL 3D images of the full controller. Michelle is working on that. That's pretty good. So we'll have that. Yeah, I mean the wiring. I don't know if we ever. I don't care if we. That's that's later phase. We don't. I'm gonna get hung up on that right now. But okay, so those are the features. Um, definitely, what's important is the bolt orientation and location, because. Uh, what we want to do for the next one, actually a lot of people complain about the magnets attachment to the frame. Um, let's see, Joseph. Joseph's called me. I'm supposed to talk to him at 9. Let's see here. Um, let's see. Joseph, you there? Can you join on... Um, do you mind joining on a Jitsi? I don't have my laptop on me. Okay. Okay. So... Did you get my message? Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't sure. Um, usually, it doesn't get. I didn't think about that uh, when we were talking last week. Uh, but I, I get home from work around four or so. So if I um, I left at about six and it, it wasn't up yet, so I thought like for future reference, I'd rather have seen the. Yeah. 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 You do. How about we just, dude, why don't we just call it off for tomorrow because the thing is still still processing. Yeah. Yeah, let's... So does that, does, so does that work as like a regular... I wanted to pick something that works like regularly. So would it be... Um, would it be good for you to meet up like every Wednesday night? It would. No, that's that's completely right. So we should we should hold off until tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. So, yeah. Same time tomorrow. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. We'll talk then. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Got it here. So yeah, let's um, let's continue here. Um, sorry, bolt orientation and location. So last time around, we we had uh, the last workshop. People just didn't like the the magnets, and we want to get rid of them and do the the ones that we can bolt to the frame. That's good. I do want to keep the magnets on the carriage because they're actually a, a good design feature. For example, if the carriage goes rams into the bed, the the extruder will eventually come off instead of destroying your print bed, because it can happen if the if the extruder just rams into the print bed, it will just eat it up. And that's happened on my Lulzbot already twice. The Lulzbot Mini. So we want to have it detachable. So if there's a failure uh, of uh, height measurement, then you're not eating your bed. So keep the magnets on the definitely on the, on the carriage. So I'm going to put that there. Keep magnets here. So magnet locations. Now... I still like the magnet holes as they are. I, I wouldn't really take them out at this point from anything because they're still useful for prototyping. And, and we actually did the little CNC circuit mill. It's pretty much attached with it. So it, they still work. I think we should keep them. So um, magnet holes. But magnet holes are important in the carriage piece. I don't think they take too much memory. We probably will keep them in... Um, in the files that we use. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So magnet holes. So definitely you want to include there. Um, 
in a simplified version it doesn't really matter if you have the internals like the actual bearings I mean you know they're going to be in there so we don't necessarily need to keep them in a undetailed version um, so I, I mean I would say you know the thing is once you do this and you put the placeholders for the files it's probably going to be very trivial to substitute one file for another like like the way you should work and and the way we work on FreeCAD is we have different versions of that file so you can put in like you could we can have a repository of all the different complexity level files and you can substitute one readily so at this point we can say okay let's just make this thing simple and then work out everything as far as the FreeCAD workbench is concerned and then we can substitute like if we find okay well maybe we need more details we can always change that so at this point it's more about getting the thing up there with a basic level of detail that we can agree on does that make sense yeah, yeah. so since the I mean there's little bearings inside there I mean they're not critical but the bolt pattern is critical so bolt pattern magnet holes and bolt pattern are are important um, what else we need to so the belt catcher hole we need to definitely have that in there so the differentiation between belt catcher and regular hole So belt catch hole has to be there. And the belt through hole has to be there. And that's, I mean, bolt pattern is, I mean, that's definitely there. Um, what else? I think that's about all we need for the carriage. It's just the thing that your tool is attached to. And on the end piece, the end piece here, that's called the idler piece, we need the bolt hole pattern. Definitely need the nut catchers on the on that side. What else? I mean there's nut catchers and definitely the I mean the rod holes, that's a detail you want to show that rod holes. On both of them so the internal detail we don't really need to care outside of knowing that there's a motor here and then the motor plug has a certain orientation um, yeah so rod holes there's two of the rod holes I mean you can literally just stick the rods right through it it won't know but uh, Just for visual effect, I think, the, to show the rod holes, that's good. Yeah, those are the kind of the main, main features there. So, do you want to, like, how should we go about this? Maybe, um, maybe start, do you have enough to start at this point? Like... Yeah. You know, yeah. Do something and then just keep progressing there, like build on it. Uh, what we have here is 
keep adding. Like, basically, as I get each piece of functionality, or just add the button for it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, the other thing that would be nice is... Uh, I'm not that good with free tabs yet. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, you got, like, the big learning curve right now. And then if you review that file simplification document, you just, just study all the parts. And you've seen them in real life, so you, you're somewhat familiar with those. But on the required features of Axis, definitely look at the file simplification doc to see where there's a big spreadsheet there, and it's got all the different files in there. So you should go through them um, to see what exactly we have at the current point. And the yeah the parts spreadsheet. Uh, there's a page called D3D Part Library. That's a big one. That's that's kind of like where we're keeping most of our parts. D3D Part Library. Yeah. So it's got a uh, there's a whole index there, and it also has a visual gallery of parts so you can get oriented there so actually a yeah, d3d part library is one of the critical pages you want to take a look at um, okay. let me just put that up in uh, on the front yeah because essentially what we're working with is putting the whole part library into FreeCAD so d3d part library Now, the cool thing is we can then, like once we're done with this, the future work would be we already built a, a circuit mill that works with the same axes and we put a little router on it. So that's in progress right now. So we can definitely extend it to that later. We're going to have to worry about that right now. But yeah, this workbench can definitely have a life of its own. Like later on, we're going to do have the other parts, like the larger axes, like the one inch. So we can design our CNC torch tables, and then we're gonna have to go super heavy duty with axes that have two inch rods. So basically, much more three D printed plastic, and it's bound together with metal plates, so it's super strong. And we go into the full heavy duty machining design work. So this, I mean, this could really this would be a great case for how we. How we do this and then we can extend this to the other one so we can have this universal axis construction set workbench all together with all the different sizes it'll get more complex later but for now this is step number one but definitely i mean there's a lot of good work to be done later some of the main things we would be able to get out of this is is one like really rapid design we could get all the documentation out of this because now we have like the full complete details we can we can readily generate documentation for different versions so this would definitely help our workflows if we have that bill of material generation with the hyperlinks i mean that's for future work um that would be big later um oh yeah so so i'll put that i'll just put that i mean the prize there is bom generator literally the the good bom generator with hyperlinks uh, that's for so later. Where should I put the should I put the code up on GitHub? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what, what's the most convenient to, to manage such a code? Probably GitHub is good, right? GitHub. Yes. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. That'll be good. So okay. what you want to do is just for documenting. So you know you've got Stephen Log. You just got your welcome email, right? From. Uh, I got the one to give me access to the wiki. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, Stephen Log. Uh -huh. Yeah. So read through that. So we're we're now logging through that timesheet. If I'm I'm looking at your log here, St Stephen log, and uh, yeah, there's a timesheet there. Try to fill it up with from the welcome email. You've got a bunch of instructions of what to put up there, like put a link to other people's pages and to the critical like working team page. So there's a few instructions. Just set up your work log so it's really effective. The way we do it is we look at everybody, like each each of us looks at each other's logs so we know where to find. Like there's never a question, like say you did something, as long as it's on your log, there's never a question like, oh, where do I find it? So that's that's really important because otherwise it becomes a mess trying to find people's stuff. So as soon as you have anything, like for example, you started the GitHub repo for this code, 
put that on your log immediately you know don't don't wait so publish definitely publish early and often publish unfinished stuff so i mean just the practicality of just losing stuff if you disappear or whatever um it's there and it cannot be taken away so anytime you have something even an initial version we like we like it to be public so that we can give feedback and and others can continue and collaborate on it so so do okay. that definitely definitely pay attention to the logging and log your hours so you could get credited for the amount of work that you do and all that and mm -hmm. for stuff like that uh what license should i put in there like do we use the creative commons or like what license gpl for G the software GPL. yeah okay yeah does that work for this code is uh yeah i think so should. yeah uh is it version three or two Oh, I think the latest, I think it's three. Okay. Let's see, what's it say on the bottom of our wiki? We have uh, Creative Commons, unless otherwise noted. Uh, oh, let's see, license. Let's see what it says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's CC by SA 4.0 and GPL. Let's see, GPL, what version? Um, what's the difference between 2 and 3? Uh, Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. I think they just clarified something. Okay, yeah, I just use the... Like I think okay. V3. Okay. GPL, yeah, just the latest, uh, latest GPL. Yep, that sounds good. So, yeah, I think you've got plenty to work on here. So, does that make all sense? Any questions for now, or...? Yeah, so, that sounds good. Yeah, I, there's definitely plenty for me to get started on. I think. Definitely. Yeah, as far as um, workshops, running workshops, you mentioned a couple of places there. So, um, yeah, what are your thoughts on, on that? I mean, so so basically find a good space you can collaborate with or you're not thinking yeah, of starting I, your own space, are you? Yeah. To do, the, to do the builds, I just happened to like come across this guy who had this workshop space, uh, so I started talking to him, um, and then just for I didn't know about for collaboration just because uh, it cost money for the space, so I didn't know if, like there was other people that were involved with this that also wanted the space because I want to do like other stuff there too. It's like a maker space thing. Yeah. So I thought it worked good for holding the workshops there as well. Yeah. So I didn't know if like other people were thinking about having like a maker space and they wanted to go in on it or whatever. And I was just checking on that. But, uh, yeah. yeah. That's really the only space that I've really found so far. But I haven't looked too deeply into it. I just kind of came across this guy. It seemed like I went up there and checked out the space. It seemed like a pretty good space for doing such a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I can try to figure out something else too. But it just, it just seems like a good spot for it anyway, like up in Berkeley. Did you talk to the guy yet, or? Yeah, I talked to him. I went up there. Yeah, he was having like a, they were getting rid of all the parts they had there. I, I guess his, uh, his, it was his dad's space. His dad was in the big maker space or whatever. Uh, but uh, it was, I guess he died recently. So they were getting rid of like all his tools and stuff like they're trying to give it to like makers or whatever. So, but I went up there just to check out the space and I also met with him and talked to him. I'm trying to figure out like a configuration because uh, there's multiple people that want to use the space as well. So I was trying to figure out like a uh, good configuration for everyone else, to use it, I guess. He's supportive. Um, he likes the idea. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He seems like he's. Uh, cool. I don't know if he necessarily knows exactly what the 3D build uh, or the 3D printer workshop is like fully about, but like as far as like the the way that I told him that I want to use the space for stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we got along well too. It's like, so I think he's just got a lot of like logistics stuff he's dealing with, with like getting the space ready and everything like that. So uh, I'm still communicating with him. But. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. So if you got any questions, just let me know. Let's let's do this.
It'll be really okay. good. Yeah, this will be really, it'll help a lot in terms of uh, getting more people involved in this. And definitely like during workshops, people can just go right at it. They can literally like design the whole thing themselves as a real, real way to learn the machine itself, you know. So if you've got all the parts there, it becomes a good teaching tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Stephen. So right. we'll we'll talk yeah. we'll talk again. Just you know, email me if you got any questions. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks a lot. Welcome to the team, man. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye bye.